It is the movie that won Sandra Bullock an Oscar and warmed the hearts of millions of moviegoers, The Blind Side. Well, today, Michael Orr, the former NFL player that that movie's based on, said most of it is a lie. The Blind Side is a feel-good movie that makes you feel good inside. It's about a white family who has some money and they take in a homeless, at-risk black youth. Now, they allegedly adopt him and he becomes part of the family. They teach him some life skills and teach him actually how to play football. And through their love and inspiration, he becomes one of the best football players in the country and wins the Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens. End of story. Now, the man who this whole story is based on is coming forward and saying it's all a lie. Now, this is shocking because the Tuies and Michael have been on this like public relations campaign since the movie has come out and it seemed like they were a loving family and all this stuff was true. But now some of the fundamental aspects of this movie and this story happen to be false. Now, for instance, as an example, Sean and Leanne Tui, that's the couple who allegedly adopted Michael, who became his guardian. They claim in the movie that they got him into a prestigious private school that their kids were attending after finding out that Michael was homeless. Now, Michael now in court documents says that this is false. What actually happens is a friend of Michael's father, who saw the potential of Michael in both sports and academics, introduced Michael to the principal of this private school in this upscale neighborhood. The principal, impressed with Michael, began allowing him to attend the school in the 10th grade. Now, this was even though Michael's home life was a little chaotic. Now, at the time Michael was attending the school, he was a sports prodigy. He excelled in things like track and field, basketball, and football. And this is even before he met the Tuies. Michael actually met the Tuies' children in the school, which they were attending at the time also. So Michael was actually already going to this prestigious private school that cost a lot of money before the Tuies even got involved. Now, the second thing that Michael is saying is false is that the Tuies introduced him to football. Well, Michael says this isn't true either. Michael, again, like before, he was a prodigy when it came to sports and he started playing football in the 11th grade and quickly established himself as one of the top offensive linemen in the country and college scholarships started pouring in from various universities big time schools and all that and this was before the Tuies even met him another thing that the movie seemingly got wrong is that the Tuies legally adopted Michael to make him part of the family here's the clip of that interaction Graphics are bright. It's awesome. Michael, we have something we'd like to ask you. What? Well, Leanne and I, we, well, we'd like to become your legal guardians. What's that mean? What it means is, is that we want to know if you would like to become part of this family. I kind of thought I already was. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then. Now, this scene is false. Michael claims that the Tuies actually had him sign a conservatorship three months after he turned 18. And Michael actually claims that the Tuies said that this was identical to an adoption because adoptions were for people who were under 18 or minors. And since he was over 18, this was the way to go. It was called known as a conservatorship. Now, it's interesting because there are some really distinct differences between an adoption and a conservatorship. For instance, adoptions are permanent. The biological parents actually lose all rights to to the child during an adoption. And the last thing, an adoption actually establishes a familiar relationship where you are now legally their children. So let's say if the person dies or something like that happens, then you are recognized as legally as one of their children. Now, conservatorships are a bit different. They are not permanent. They are temporary. They can be rescinded at any time. And this does not establish that fam familiar or family relationship. With a conservatorship, Michael's biological parents continue to keep their parental rights. The most famous example of a conservatorship is Britney Spears, that conservatorship that she had to go through with her father. Now, in both situations, the person who is either the conservator or who adopts a child has full legal authority to make decisions on that 
child's behalf. Now, this means medical, financial, etc. Now, Michael claims that the Tuohys told him there was essentially no difference between an adoption and a conservatorship. Michael claims they, the Tuohys, explain to me that it means pretty much the exact same thing as adoptive parents, but that the laws were just written in a way that took my age into account or wrote in his 2011 best-selling memoir, I Beat the Odds. Now, as conservators, the Tuohys were able to sign contracts on Michael's behalf, even though he was an adult. Remember, the same thing happened with Britney Spears. So allegedly, the Tuohys inked the deal that sold Michael's story to the movie studio and then split the money four ways between the Tuohy family. And Michael claims that he didn't get any money from that particular movie deal. Now, in the past, the Tuohys have denied that they made any money from the movie, saying that they only received the flat free for the story and did not reap any of the movie's profits. And specifically, what they did earn, they actually shared with Michael. In their book, In a Heartbeat, Sharing the Power of Cheerful Giving, they said, quote, we divided it five ways. The movie actually addresses the issue of whether they were taking advantage of Michael or not, because the Tuohys were theoretically what's known as a booster. So let me explain to you what a booster is. A booster is referred to by the NCAA as a representative of an institution's athletic interest. Now they help get the best players to the best schools, you know, get tickets and all that type of thing, sell out the stadium. Now it's alleged that the Tuohys were boosters for Old Miss. Now remember when the Tuohys met Michael, he was already going to the private school he was already getting big time football scholarship requests and he was already a sports prodigy this was before he met the Tuohys. now the Tuohys bought him lavish gifts spoiled him convincing him that he was part of their family and got him to play for old miss the school that they were associated with here's a scene from the movie where michael is given a brand new car by the Tuohys. one more Well, that's the one you wanted, isn't it? <laughs> Here. Here you go. Go ahead. Take it for a ride. Go on. Can I go too? Yeah, but Michael. Shotgun! Woo! He wanted a truck. Well, Michael thinks he's a redneck. Now, in the movie, the NCAA did like this little investigation to try to find out if the Tuohys were actually good actors or if they were actually trying to play this kid to get him to go to their school, which they were essentially boosters for. Here is that clip from the movie. The NCAA fears that with your recruitment, a door might be opened. That boosters from lots of schools in the South would become legal guardians of young athletes without means and funnel them to their alma maters. I'm not saying I believe it. I'm not saying I don't. But there are many people involved in this case who would argue that the Tuohys, they took you in. They clothed you. No. They fed you. They paid no. for your private education. They bought you a car. No. They paid for a tutor. No. All is part of a plan to ensure that you play football for the University of Mississippi. Michael, we're not finished. Now, this is essentially what Michael says happened. They boosted him to get him to go to Old Miss. Now, Michael is asking a court to end the conservatorship and cut the movie proceeds five ways, and he wants to move on with his life. Now, this has sent shockwaves through the sports world because this was one of those feel-good stories, but now it seems like there may be more behind the scenes. Now remember, there's always two sides to every story. Here is the two East son, Sean, responding to some of the allegations by Michael. Spot, but uh, he was 10 minutes, he was 20 minutes away, which is awesome. That was the coolest thing of all time, like in that scheme of life, they won the Super Bowl and like he would be on road trips and leave his garage unlocked with Ashton Martin in it, which wasn't very smart. Sorry, Mike, you see that. And, and tons of stuff like that, that I would never take back. So uh, the relationship, you know, I was the Super Bowl he wanted. I was at the Super Bowl he lost it, that was 20, I was a senior in class, 16, 17. Um, I told you, he gave me great advice in 2021 when I was trying to, to come here. It's kind of been perpetual, and, and I think to some extent families do that as, as you get to be older and do your own things. Uh, I hope that's more the case, but um, there wasn't one moment that I point to like, man, 
that that moment is when it all went south. Um, I think when my dad sold his company, that, that there was that's when like money started being more relevant because someone put a big article out, um, you know, about that, and it was unrelated. But maybe that was it. I, I, I wish there was. I knew that moment because I could go back to it and go, whoa, whoa, whoa like let's let's figure this thing out. I, I, I truthfully don't know that moment. Um, and it, it may not exist. So, what, when, when's the last what? time you talked to him? Um, within the year in text, I mean, the, the, I would go to, he lives in Nashville or outside Nashville. Uh, and I would go once or twice a year. I mean, he, I, and, and his son, MJ, um, you know, I, I would try to check in yearly, but it's been, we, we did Christmas. I don't know. Twin, I think I sent, uh, so let me know what you think. Do you think the Tuis are bad actors here who took advantage of an at-risk youth who was already on the way up, who, you know, who was a sports prodigy? He was already getting scholarship offers. He was already going to, you know, going to go to a big school. He was already on his way up. Did they just see an opportunity to, you know, use this kid, make money off this kid, and then, you know, send him on his way? It's it's interesting because Michael says that he actually didn't look into any of this until after he retired. And then when he started looking at the paperwork, he's like, oh, my God, I'm under a conservatorship. These people can make decisions for me. Now, mind you, Michael has family, has kids, he has all this other stuff. And he's still under the conservatorship even right now, which is kind of crazy. But, you know, all along, he actually thought that he was a part of this family. And now he sees legally he is not. So... You know, who knows what the ramifications of this is going to be. But let me know in the comment section what you think. Do you think Michael was taken advantage of? Do you think there may be two sides to the story and the other side we just haven't heard yet? You know, who knows? But let's just be clear. The two weeds were going around claiming that Michael was their adopted son. And they knew that was false for sure. That was false. That was a false statement. And he was just under a conservatorship. So... And that, I think, is the crazy part of this story. Let me know how you feel in the comment section. My name is Nick Deloy, and I'll see you next time. Peace.